Hello friends, welcome to See Joy Yoga and thank you very much for your support and your patronage. Uh, today's class, you will want to have two blocks, one is under my tush right now, and a strap. Now, if you don't have those, I will give modifications to do the class without them. However, they are just so very, very sweet to have. Uh, uh, do yourself a favor if you don't and just buy some so you start to utilize them. They just make things way more accessible, I, I think personally. So the first pose that we're going to do, assuming you have two blocks, is a pose that goes directly into the upper body. One of those blocks will be on medium, and then right behind it, this is the back of my mat, I'm going to have one block on high to catch my head. The structure of the body, the very bottom tips of your shoulder blades, your scapula, I have my fingers on mine right now, so just kind of move your shoulder blades around a little bit, shoulders round forward, bring them back and see if you can't identify, you might even bring your hand back and depending on your flexibility, see if you can find the bottom tips and be like, ah, those. Because I'm not there to help you out, so if you don't know this pose, right, this might be a strange one uh, in the beginning. You're gonna try to bring the bottom tips of your shoulder blades onto the top edge of this, and your head is going to be caught by that. Now before we lower into this, if you do not have blocks, you can grab a couch pillow, right? You can grab a, uh, maybe probably two regular pillows, something like that. And you could always put your tush right in front of that and lay back over and you're still going to get this opening. You're going to see my chest do here in this pose, right? But again, I'm going to speak mainly to the blocks today. And if you don't have two pillows, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> I will buy you some, send me your information. And um, um, if you wanna just lay on your mat for your beginning awareness, don't have any props at all and lie down on your mat. So you have three places you can live, friends. I'm gonna put my buttocks on this mat. And this is, you know, it depends on your torso length, a little bit behind me. I find that as I'm lowering down, if I'm not in line, I'm a little bit too far down with the block, I'm feeling it cutting into my ribs, right? It's easier for me to come up, move my buttocks a little forward, and come back down. So I find that coming up and moving my buttocks further up or back is the most helpful way, right? And then I'm gonna let my shoulder blades come onto my back. I literally walk them down, and I bring my head down to that tall block, and hopefully, hopefully, you don't feel like there's major pain, slight discomfort from being like, whoa, my chest is wide open, since we round it every day most of the day, might be extreme, but not painful, yeah? If it's painful, come out and use one of the other two variations. My friends who this is all right for, again, the shoulder blades are down the back, the arms come out, much like Shavasana, and that would be true for all three poses. Right? And before you extend those legs, I would suggest lifting your buttocks, pushing into the heels, lifting the buttocks, reach your buttocks forward a little bit. Keep reaching it forward as you set it back down so you find some low back length, and then see if those legs might be okay being stretched out. If they're not, just leave the feet on the ground, feet a little wide, knees lean in. And from this starting point, Right? You can always hit pause and re you know, reconvene, get yourself figured out what you need and get yourself into the pose. But once you find a pose that is uh, comfortable, in quotes, right, for you to stay here, that feels like it's opening you, but also a place where you can live without pain, the eyes close and we scan through the body from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes trying to release every single muscle. To my friends who are on blocks or bolsters or pillows, let those shoulders have weight, let those shoulders soften down to the earth, and the more they do, right, the more they soften, you're not efforting, the more they soften, the broader your collarbone gets. We start to stretch the front body And we're going to take about five more breaths. And for those breaths, how about you bring your awareness directly into your breath? Right? Notice what's moving, what's not. How does this shape in the body change the breath?
Usually this pose really opens up the lungs for the majority of us. So if we're used to them being collapsed and we open them like this, we can find a deeper breath. Always without efforting. And one more breath, wherever you are in your breathing pattern. Now to come out of this safely, we're going to turn our palms down and try to move our elbows back a little bit as our shoulders lift up so we can get our support in them. We're gonna bend our knees and put our feet on the ground. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna inhale. On an exhale, use the low belly, push into the elbows. The head is the last thing to come up out of that. So we keep the neck soft and here we are. Now go ahead and take the blocks or your props and put them off to the side. We're gonna do a couple of things from seated. And so if you wanna have a block underneath your tush, you can. If virasana is possible, hero's pose, you'll bring that block or a pillow or a book or some such thing, a, a, a sturdy box crate kind of thing, right? Between the heels, the knees move in towards one another and my buttocks come down onto that. Now on these blocks you have three settings, so you can use the appropriate setting. The higher up, the easier it is on the knees. The lower down, the harder it might be on your particular knees. My knees are pretty receptive, so I can usually bring it to the lowest setting, but I'm just going to stay on that medium one today because it's not really about my knees as much. If you're like, uh, no way, sit on a chair, sit on the ground, cross-legged, whatever works. Again, we're going to go into the upper body, so be prepared for that. You can do this standing. Reach your arms out to the sides. Go ahead and turn your palms up. And before we go further, just notice the alignment of the upper back and the neck, right? Make sure that you find that, that uh, just like we were on the blocks, right? That the shoulder blades, the bottom tips, they move in just gently to help that chest stay broad. And the crown of the head comes directly out of the rest of the spine. And now from there, we're going into eagle arms, Garudasana arms. You're gonna cross your right arm underneath your left and see if you can't get all the way crossed. Some of my friends will hug themselves. Some of my friends will bring those forearms towards one another and wrap the palms around. It's just really my fingers getting the base of my thumb. Whatever that is, depends on the length of your arms, right? Keep the upper trapezius, the inner shoulders out of this and see if maybe the elbows can lift up just a little bit, no higher than the height of the shoulders, but they might lift up a little bit for you. And that's true hugging or interlacing. Now, can you soften those inner shoulders down? Take a moment to do that, right? So this next piece goes like this, and this is true whether you're hugging or interlaced, right? We're gonna go into a, the, our, a, a cat-cow action in our upper back. So when we inhale, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let our elbows lift up, let our upper back move in, and our neck extends, our gaze ends up moving up. And when we exhale, we're gonna let those elbows start to move down to the chest and round that upper back behind us, soften the neck in. Inhale, reach those elbows forward and up, pull the upper back into the chest, chest opens. And exhale, let the elbows move down, let the shoulder blades come around the sides of the body and let the back round behind you. Inhale, elbows lift up, chest lifts up, gaze lifts up. Exhale, elbows move in, spine rounds, chin moves down. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. So again, we're thinking cat-cow, so you can even roll onto the back of your buttocks bones a little bit. One more. Inhale, same arm motion, but if I want to get my hips a little more involved, I go to the front of my buttocks bones, and as I exhale, I'm going to roll to the back of my buttocks bones. Come right back to the middle, release those arms out, bring them down to the side, pause, hands on the thighs, inhale, and exhale. So we favored one shoulder when we did that. Got a little bit more of a stretch, right? So we're gonna go to the other side. Arms tee out, turn the palms up. Soften the shoulders back and find out where your head and your upper back are. Get them in line. And your left arm is going to come underneath your right this time and you're either going to hug or do the full interlace. 
Keeping the inner shoulders soft, we might lift those elbows up, and that's for either variation of the arms, <clears throat> right? If you need to come out of your asana at some point, please do. Try to soften those inner shoulders down and get them out of the picture. And here we go into our cat-cow action. Inhale, elbows lift up, gaze lifts up. Exhale, elbows move towards the chest, soften the chin towards the chest. Inhale, reaching those elbows up, pulling that chest forward and up, gaze up, and exhale, round the body in. Three more. Inhale, see if you can find that beautiful open chest. You might even rock to the front of the buttocks bones. And exhale, pulling the elbows down towards the chest, coming onto the back of the buttocks bones. Two more. Inhale into our variation today of cow and exhale into our variation of cat. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Come right back to the very middle. Release the arms out. Turn the palms down. Release the arms down by the side. Put the hands on the thighs. And again, I'm going to suggest you take a moment and you pause and you just notice. Hopefully we're starting to open some channels of energy and we start to feel energy moving out of those tight, restricted spots. Hopefully they're not as restricted. And we're going to do one more thing here. If you need to change your, your stance, please do, right? And uh, if you're sitting cross-legged at this time, put the other shin in front so that we keep those shins, uh, uh, hips a little more neutral. So for this one, you're going to go ahead and you're going to inhale your arms out like we just did. Yeah, go ahead and for a moment, turn the palms up just so you can feel those shoulders softening down and back and the collarbone is going to stay nice and broad. Now from your forearm, you're going to turn the palms back down, but keep the broad collarbone and the crown of the head lifting up. Now, like an airplane, you're going to over to the right. Yeah, get those right fingertips down and now reroute your right buttocks bone down. And this is whatever variation of legs you're doing. Turn the palm, the left palm towards the right side and without the body rotating down, we're gonna reach that arm potentially over and up. If you have shoulder issues, you're gonna reach that arm forward and over. And if that's still not okay with your shoulder, hand on hip, work your left shoulder behind you a little bit, yeah? So you've got variations for all of the stuff that might be going on. Hopefully there's a home for you. Now from there, <clears throat> pardon me, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna reach that hand back down until it's just a little bit from your side, palm towards your thigh or towards your hip. Now don't let that shoulder roll down, that top shoulder. Keep the left shoulder lifting up, but go ahead and let your right ear move towards your right shoulder. And the head just kind of hangs here. Right, so we're starting to get stretching in that side of the neck. And you can play with it. Without dropping the left shoulder, you might turn your chin down a little bit and play with what gets the most in your neck, right? And so kind of play with where that position is and you can move that chin either forward or down towards the shoulder. And once you're like, ah, there it is, that's the spot, pause. Right here is mine, slightly down. And take another breath, inhale. Exhale there, softening into it, releasing. Now you're gonna walk your right hand over, keep your neck and head where it is, please, and walk your right hand over and bring the body up, and then let the chin move back to the center and bring the head back into position. Inhale those arms teed out for a moment, turn the palms up so you get that beautiful broad collarbone. Now keep that, turn the palms down, and like an airplane, Right? With your left fingertips on the ground, reground the left buttocks bone down, have that get heavy, right? And you can always walk the hands in a little bit if you feel like you're too far up, find your place. Right palms, they turn towards the left, and we're going to reach over the side body, right? Bicep next to ear-ish. Option one, if your shoulder's like, ah, I can't quite find it, this is a usually an easier line to be able to find the alignment of the shoulder if you're working with an injury or just a shoulder that's a little tricky. Option three, hand on the hip. All of us, we all get that right shoulder to lift up, yeah? 
the right side of the sternum. And then from whatever position you're in, right, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Now we'll all meet here again. We're gonna turn the palm down and we're gonna bring that hand, that arm about, I don't know, what is that, about a foot and a half out from the hip, something like that. Now let your left ear move towards your left shoulder, but keep your right buttocks bone heavy. And just let the head kind of drape in. Keep that right shoulder up, right? And then from there, this is where we can play with the chin. We all have different necks. So if, you might find that if you let the chin roll down towards the left shoulder, you find a spot in your neck that needs a little more attention. So you can kind of play with that a little bit. For mine, actually, it gets the most straightforward today on this side, not on the other side, right? Each side is very different usually. And take another breath there, reaching the fingertips away, softening the head in, letting it have weight. To come out of it, we're gonna walk our left fingertips back and back and back and use the body first, and then the head comes up, and we lift the chin if necessary. Pause and notice what you're feeling in that upper back and neck area. And let's get out of these darn virasana legs. Whew, that's a lot for some of us, right? So we can move that block off to the side, and we're gonna move into our first downward dog. So walk your hands about two inches in front of your shoulders, curl your toes under, and then go ahead and start to move back to your downward dog. Now from there, I'm gonna suggest you bend the knees, and with your knees bent, can you reach your buttocks bones further up and back, yeah? And then maybe the heels move down a little bit, but again, for this first one, I would suggest just bending the knees and letting it really be. I mean, it's an upper body kind of a day, right? We wanna figure out what's going on in there. So the first place I'm gonna bring your attention is to your upper trapezius, AKA your inner shoulders. Are they jerking towards your ears right now? And can they soften away from the ears just a little bit so they're not so active, right? Can you push into your fingers and your palms and feel your triceps, your outer upper arms pinning in towards your face. And then go ahead and take one more breath here. <clears throat> Pardon me, inhale. Now, now that we uh, uh, got into that upper body, try to keep some of that stability, but it might feel really good on the backs of those knees after doing Virasana to pedal the legs out a little bit and release any pressure that might have built up there. Notice if you're holding on in your neck, if you're looking forward between your hands, I can guarantee you are clinging in that neck. So maybe shift the gaze back somewhere between the toes-ish or somewhere in that realm, depending on your neck, right? And try to soften that neck a little bit. And let's walk our hands back to our feet. We'll end up at the back of our mat. Pause there, grab your elbow points and bend the knees and soften in for two breaths, allowing traction, soft neck, soft shoulders. Put your other forearm in front, two more breaths on this side. Inhale, soften the neck, soften the shoulders. Exhale, <clears throat> pardon me, one more. Inhale, where's your weight in your feet? And exhale, put your hands on your shins and inhale, shoulder blades towards the buttocks, straight arms reaching that chest straight out in front of you, pause. Now really, literally, the shins don't move back, but I'm gonna push into my shins to see if I can't find a little more of an opening in my upper back. If you're in my school, you're dropping your ribs down and you're not turning on your low belly. So pull that low belly up through the crown of the head lightly. Now everybody, wherever you just were, hands on the hips, elbows up, shoulders up. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, bring those arms down by the side. And you're gonna stand long ways in your mat, right, facing this way. So if you need to change your device so that you're not trying to do this all the time, right, go ahead and put your device wherever you need to so you can see it. We're gonna bring our fingertips together, take an inhale, stepping or jumping the feet wide today, whichever one works for you, right? Make sure your toes are straight forward. Put your hands on your hips, and we're gonna move into warrior two, but we're gonna do a variation. And I'm gonna come out, you're gonna stay in, but I wanna show you uh, on my back body the, what, the, the variation of the arms. So we're gonna take our hands, you can do this right now, and interlace them behind you. With a little elbow bend, we push into the sacrum. Without the sacrum moving at all, we're gonna try and see if we can get those shoulder heads to move back. Move the shoulder blades not together, but down, right? Imagine being on that block again, like we did at the beginning of class. And maybe, maybe those knuckles reach down a little bit. 
Now, you're gonna see if you can get those knuckles to wrap around your right side waist. And you're right here, right? My knuckles are wrapping around. I'm gonna see if my elbows can move in towards each other. I'm gonna make sure I'm not moving my body all over tarnation, right? My, my moving from my shoulder joints, but not the rest of my body. And now you can stay right here. If you wanna go into warrior two legs, we're gonna go into warrior two legs and we'll add on so you might want to go there, right? But don't push yourself. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna turn your left toes in and then turn your whole right leg out. And I'm not gonna focus on the legs, but you know, make sure your legs are healthy, healthy, your knees are healthy. And when you bend in, the one thing I will say, your ankle is right underneath your knee, right? And then what happened to this body? Can you pull that frontal hip point up and get nice and tall, elbows still moving to each other. If they aren't anymore, do it now, right? And take one more breath, inhale. And exhale, now you can stay right here. If it's okay to bring that left hand down, like it could grab onto that right wrist or it might just be next to the hip, that is all right as well. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna inhale that right arm out and up and then lengthen, lengthen, lengthen as you bring the elbow to the knee. So my left hand is on my hip, right? My right arm is on my leg. You can use your block if you want to, but that's not what that's about today. So I'm gonna pull against my thigh or push into my hip and I'm gonna try and roll this left shoulder up to the sky and I'm gonna go ahead and slide my shoulders away from my ears. Now for a neck variation, you're gonna go ahead and keep your right, uh, left sternum, sorry, your left shoulder high and go ahead and turn the head down. So don't let the shoulder go down with you, keep that high and just let that head turn down as comfortably as it can so the gaze goes down the chin towards the shoulder-ish, right shoulder away from right ear. And let that chin tuck in just a little bit towards the chest. And again, play with where that is for you. Where is your sweet spot? Sweet being the place where you feel the biggest stretch without killing yourself. Can you breathe? Is your jaw still soft? Etc. Go ahead and take one more breath from here. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to release this by reaching our left hand out of that hip crease and reaching that up towards the sky. Now, using that left heel and the left arm, we're gonna inhale up to warrior two. Woo, straighten those legs, getting the leg workout too, right? Hands on the hips, turn the toes straight forward and bring the arms down for just a moment. They can just kind of rest on your thighs and just notice the difference between the sides of the body. Moving to the other side. Interlacing your hands behind you, other index finger on top. Pushing into the sacrum, shoulder heads back. Find that beautiful spine. Do not let your head be forward, right? Let the crown of the head reach up. Reach the knuckles down and you might stay right here. You might wrap your knuckles around the left side body. Move the elbows in towards one another. My sway back, friends. Keep those ribs from swaying. Back ribs off, back waist, legs. You can stay here, by the way. Turn your right toes in, turn your whole left leg out. See so if you can get the chest to turn back towards me. Inhale, bend on your exhale, making sure your left ankle is underneath your left knee. And again, it's not a leg day, but you know, make sure they stay safe, please. We don't wanna injure the body because we're not paying attention to it. And then from there, take one more breath, inhale. Again, try to roll that right shoulder back. Now you're gonna see if you can place that right hand in the left hip crease or hand against hip is totally acceptable. You're gonna reach the left arm up and then lengthen and lengthen and lengthen and lengthen and lengthen as you place left elbow on left leg or grab block, whatever you prefer. Now, before we do anything else, try to pull against the thigh with the right hand and see if you can let that right shoulder work higher up towards the sky, or I could say back behind you a little bit, yeah? And then once you got that going on, do not let that change. Don't let it drop down, right? Crown of the head directly out of that back heel, out of the spinal column. Go ahead and without your right shoulder moving forward or dropping down, turn your head down as far as it comfortably can, looking down, right? And then from there, play with the chin. The chin might move towards the chest just a little bit or staying exactly where it is. So kind of find that sweet spot and wherever you're feeling the biggest stretch in the left side, oh, sorry, right side for you guys, the right side of your neck. Breathe into it. Inhale. Again, right shoulder high. 
head softening down. And to come out of it, we release the right arm up and out. Pushing our right heel and using the right arm, we inhale up to warrior two. Straightening the legs, we bring our hands to our hips. Turn the toes straight forward, reach the arms down to the side, pause. Do your neck and your shoulders feel any differently than when you started this class? Do you feel as if there's any energy now able to maybe get through what once were some tight or restricted areas? Um, I forgot to warn you, so if you need to move to get blocks, if you're in this pose, please be cautious so you don't tweak your knees in a lateral position. You might step in for a moment to get the blocks. You might not need them. I'm gonna go this way first. You're in the same position, right? Legs wide on your mat, but I want you to see my side body. Toes are straight forward, shoulder heads back, shoulder blades down the back. Hopefully this is feeling a little more open at this point. And now, really rooting down through the feet, we're gonna to start to fold forward. Some of my friends, we have three levels on blocks. We're not folding all the way in yet. Before you fold in, I want you to find that beautiful upper back here. So whatever level of block and or ground suits you, use that one. Today, I can do the ground, but it just feels a little bit better for me to be on some height today. So I'm going to, I'm going to listen to my body, right? 10 fingertips, wherever you are. On your 10 fingertips, if you have wrist issues, use fists, right? I'm gonna slide my shoulders towards my buttocks. I'm gonna imagine that block at the beginning of class is helping my bottom tips blossom my chest forward towards the front of whatever room you're in, right? Really activate through all four corners of the feet and take another inhale here. I'm trying to build strength at this moment. And when you exhale, don't just let the chin drop down. Don't just let the shoulders drop down. Hinge at the hips, keeping the long, long spine you just created. Your hands might come in between the feet. You might simply be on your blocks, but move your blocks back just a little bit, right? So you can kind of find the piece that works the best for you. My fingers point the same way as my toes. I do soften my spine when I'm in that last little piece. My sway back, friends, make sure you're pulling your low belly towards the spine to keep the low back protected. Release the neck, I say, as I release mine. Mine was super tense. Take another breath, inhale. Exhale, soften. To come up, we come up halfway on our blocks or on the ground, and we get that same fire in between the shoulder blades, yeah? And then from there, we're gonna put our hands on our hips, our elbows up, our shoulders up, and inhale, use all those core muscles. Come on up, let's get out of these legs. We're gonna bring our fingertips together, bend the knees. We've been there for a while. You might heel toe in a little bit and then step or jump the feet in. Ta-da! Sana, ta-da sana, mountain pose. Breathing, noticing, observing, witnessing, right? Many words. The one that speaks to you, do that one. Maybe close the eyes or mostly close them. Okay, next piece to this class is going to be a lunge with Gomukhasana arms. This is where that strap, belt, towel, whatever you have comes in handy. So just so you see the shape of it before you're in a lunge and you're on your knee, right? We'll bring the strap over the right shoulder. Well, maybe the right shoulder. I'll figure out when I'm down in there. But one hand goes behind the body to reach. The other arm is going to go up to try to get onto that strap. And I'll talk about the alignment of the shoulders. We will be in a lunge. Uh, but, you know, if you want to take the lunge out of it, you can do the arms from here when I'm talking through them standing, right? Otherwise, if you are in the lunge, keep awareness in the lower body to keep it safe, but then really try to focus on the upper body and don't worry as much about the lower body portion of it, right? Because it's not a hip day. So, having that strap handing, st handing, standing by, <laughs> standing at the top of your mat, Inhale, reach the arms forward and up. Keep those upper trapezius sliding down. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, reach the chest forward. 
Now bend your knees and plant your hands and step your left foot way, way back. Bring the knee down and uncurl the toes. I happen to be on carpet and my mat, but if you have sensitive knees, a blanket underneath the knees or even folding your mat over one more time for extra cushion, right? Again, we're gonna be here for a little bit. If it's like, uh, no, stand up and just do the arms and the upper back. From there, get really long through the spine. Grab your straps so you don't have to go looking for it, right? Put your hands on your thighs and come on up. Now come back just a little bit, right? So my knee is a little behind my ankle just while I set up. Now from there, give me a second, I'm thinking. No, I'm gonna go the other side. You're gonna put your strap over your left shoulder, left shoulder, the opposite shoulder of the bent knee in front of you. And then you're gonna reach the right arm out to the side, turn the thumb down, grab onto that strap. Reach your left arm up, turn the palm behind you, Grab onto that strap. If you can get the fingers, take it, right? But I often forced my shoulders into it against the health of my shoulders just to get my fingers. So see if you can, and I'm going to turn towards you now, right? See if you can get that left arm to move into the face just a little bit more and your elbow reaching up to the sky without your ribs distorting. Right shoulder. Can you see if that right shoulder blade can slide down and flatten onto your back shoulder, not elbow, right? Don't do this. This is not good for your shoulder. Go ahead and see if the, or the elbow. See if the shoulder can move back. And you can pull lightly on that strap just to find that extra little bit of length potentially. And then for the very last piece, right, where is your head? Is your upper back still wanting to round behind you or your head off to the side? So see if you can pull those shoulder blades, bottom tips, into the back and blossom the chest, crown of the head reaching directly up out of the rest of the spine. And maybe, maybe, now that you've got all that beautiful, beautiful upper body, you come into the lunge just a touch more. And as your right frontal hip point pulls up through your right elbow, and if that knee pushes down, maybe that psoas gets some juice in it as well. Inhale. Oh, it's your left arm. Sorry, I thought I was mirroring you, but I'm not. Your left leg is back and your left arm is up. Left side, left side. And reach that down. And come on down to the mat. Move the strap off to the side. We'll come back to it. Curl the left toes under. Step back. Downward dog. If you don't want a downward dog, half downward dog, or child's pose. Breathing wherever in the heck you are. Noticing, especially through that upper body and neck. Soften the neck, please. Inhale the left leg into the air behind you and step that foot forward, right? Another variation is to bring the knees down, step the left foot wide and walk it over. And then go ahead and come on up into your lunge. Double the mat over, blanket, whatever you need. Get your strap, right? Hands on the thigh and just start to find the alignment of the spine. Strap over right shoulder. Left arm reaches out, turn the palm down and reach back and grab onto the strap. The thumb down, <laughs> the palm. <laughs> go ahead and reach the right arm up, turn the palm behind you and grab onto the strap. So this is where I goof myself up because now I'm doing the same thing as you. Now I'm going to turn and mirror you. Then I have to remember to go back. Oh, it's hard to be me, you guys. It's so hard. <laughs> so the shoulders, your right arm moving in towards the face and the elbow moving up towards the sky. Don't let the rib reflect that, right? Keep the rib in neutral. And then the ribs. And then go ahead and end the other arm, your left right? See if you can move that left shoulder blade onto the back and don't move from the elbow, move the shoulder back a little bit and broaden right through this armpit part of the body, right? And now the last piece is, is just to notice, yeah, to notice what is happening with your upper back and your head right now. A lot of times we're pitched forward or kind of off to the side. So if, and your right hand might be in that general area, your shoulder blades move in, your chest opens, and the crown of the head reaches directly out, right? Maybe, maybe I can shift into this a little bit, pulling my frontal hip points up, right one through right elbow, right? Right knee pushing down, and also here's the psoas, yeah? In, pardon me, inhale and exhale. Release the hands, release the strap. 
Hands come down, step back for one more downward dog in today's class. Skip it if you don't want it. Maybe come forward about halfway to a plank. I'm demonstrating if it doesn't make sense. Can your shoulder blades move towards your buttocks, right? Can you reach the chest a little further forward, the gaze a little further forward, and then try to keep some of that alignment as you push back. Now, I'm not gonna have a rigid neck, right? I'm not looking forward between my hands, but I'm also not just dropping my head down so that my head is all the way in that forward position. There's nothing great about that position, right? Inhale, and then we're coming forward, guys. On your exhale, come up on your tippy toes, bend your knees. You can step or jump forward. If that's difficult for you, it's a little easier to walk your hands to the back of your mat. All of those options are on the table. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Hands on the hips, elbows up, shoulders up. Inhale, come on up. Ooh, exhale, bring those arms down. Again, notice what's happening in your upper body and just check into that. Maybe close the eyes if that helps you tune in a little more. Okay guys, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got one more piece of work. <laughs> Every time I say that, I think of someone who used to always tell me, you're a piece of work. We have one more piece of work to do. And then we're gonna come into our back, do a twist in Shavasana. So we're putting near there, guys. Have your blocks standing by. If you don't have blocks, you can work it without the blocks, yeah? You're gonna come on down to your belly and I'm just gonna let you get there however it's best for your body today. And then you're gonna take those blocks and have them come directly out to your side so that the palms can come down squarely on the blocks. And I'm gonna say medium height should be good for most of us. If you're dealing with a very tight upper back or the shoulders got something funky going on, you got your low and if you don't have blocks, you have all the way on the ground or if that's just better for your body, right? So it's gonna be a variation of Shalabhasana or I could say even Cobra, I guess, because our feet are never gonna leave the earth. So your forehead can come down to the ground. I'm going to lift mine so you can hear my voice. Right? Pressing down into the tops of the feet, let the thighs start to get buoyant like helium balloons up to the ceiling. Go ahead and try to pull your low belly up like it could come off the floor. It won't, but that's how much we pull it up. That's our low back protection, yeah? And now pushing into the blocks, can you slide your shoulder blades towards your buttocks, right? And can you push into the blocks and maybe the shoulders start to lift just a little bit? Let the head and the chest follow that. So I'm just hovering off the earth. I'm not very high off the earth at all, right? And as I root down through my palms, trying to find that fire between my shoulder blades, that helps lift me up here. I might roll onto the pinky edge of my hands, my palms, towards the front of the room, right? Or towards the, the side my crown of my head is facing. Now push down one more time, karate chop your pinky fingers down in, find those muscles between the shoulder blades. Some of my friends are staying here. If your low back is hurting, come lower, come down, come out, pull your low belly up A first, that's probably what it is, right? But some of us, we have a, a short ligament in the front of our spine that just doesn't allow this. And then from there, toes back, crown of the head forward. Last, the piece de resistance, that doesn't mean you have to do it. You might really slowly, keeping that idea of the pressure, the karate chop, start to reach your arms forward and forward and forward. And now reach your crown of your head forward, reach your fingers forward, shoulders and sockets. Push your feet down, but reach your toes back, inhale, exhale. Ooh, stack those hands underneath your forehead. Bring your head down and breathe. Hey, Crystal Joy, I thought this was supposed to help my upper back and my neck. Yeah, it is. This does. We can open up our chest and our shoulders as much as we want, but if we do not strengthen that area between the shoulder blades, nothing holds it into position, yeah? And it just keeps rounding forward and rounding forward. And before you know it, we look like a little old person with a dowager's hump. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> See, I don't even need people in the room and I crack myself up. Take one more breath, inhale. And exhale. 
We're gonna roll onto our backs, people. We don't even have to come up. So I'm gonna suggest you reach an arm long overhead and just push into that other hand and roll onto your back body. You obviously have to readjust if you're working with a mat and come into the center of the mat. Start by just bringing the knees into the chest. You can go behind the legs or in front of the shins, whatever feels groovy. And as you hug those legs in, just let the spine round lightly, right? And maybe even rock a little bit from right to left. Ah, you did it. You made it, guys. We're almost there. Let's bring it into a twist. We're going to bring our arms out to the side with our palms up. We're going to try and keep the knees a little higher, but we're going to let them come down if they want to, okay? We're going to let the legs come over to the right. We want the right pinky toe to make it to the earth, so if the knees need to come away from the body, they do. Soften in. Turn your head to the left and soften the left shoulder down. And then, you know, without being uh, um, aggressive, I'll call it. I should come up with a better term for this one anyway. Maybe those knees move up towards the elbow a little bit more. And the reason why I'm having you try to bring the legs a little higher is because it starts to usually shift it and bring it up the spine a little bit. So again, just trying to get into more towards that mid upper back. Soften. One more, find that breath, inhale. And exhale. Using some waist awareness, right? Side waist and low belly. We're going to bring those legs back up. And then we're going to exhale them right over to the left side. Left pinky toe comes down to the ground. You guys might turn your head to the right. If I do, you won't hear my voice as well. So I'm going to keep my head this way, right? But you would turn the opposite direction of the knees. Maybe, maybe those knees can come up a little higher, but they got to be able to soften. If they can't soften, go lower. And then let go. What can you let go of? And just take a couple of breaths here. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Put a little awareness into your right side waist and your low belly to bring the knees back up. Put your feet on the ground. If you feel like you have to pick your hips up and kind of center yourself and bring them back down or get low back length, do. Reach the legs out. Feet about hip distance, arms out, palms up, shoulder blades down the back, and we're moving into Shavasana. So close the eyes. And with those eyes closed, go ahead and start to scan through the body and try to soften every muscle from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. And every time that the brain gets a little sidetracked, the mind gets sidetracked, we just bring it on back, not a big deal. Once you've scanned the body, maybe take a couple of extra moments of awareness in the upper back, the shoulders, and the neck. Noticing if anything's going on there, how do they feel different than when you walked in, if they do at all. And then I'm going to take my voice out for the last few bits here. Every time the mind starts to wander off, we're going to use an anchor point today. And your anchor is going to be your breath, right? So you can bring it back to the breath. And you can either just pay attention to the breath. I find it helpful to say inhale when I inhale and exhale when I exhale. And, you know, I usually only stay there for about maybe a breath if I'm lucky, maybe two on a good day. <laughs> and then my brain goes somewhere else and I realize it whenever I realize it. And, you know, just like a puppy, I'm not going to yell at the puppy to come back here. It's not going to come back. I'm going to put it back and I'm going to say, come here, puppy. Come here. 
You know, so be gentle. Be gentle with your mind and just bring it back to the breath. Bring your awareness back to your breath if it's somewhere else. Let that breath deepen, right? Usually just bringing your awareness there allows it to begin to deepen. And if you want to wiggle fingers or toes or add movement back in, if you want to stretch your arms overhead, and then go ahead and bend the knees wherever you are. You can roll either way, the right or the left. And if you're dealing with a shoulder injury, you know, go to the side that favors that shoulder, whatever that means to you. Now, I want to point something out. When we go to come out of bed or push off of our yoga mats, etc., almost every body I watch every day, by the way, uses their neck. That's a lot of pressure on your neck, friends. Your neck's not built to lift the weight of your body. So turn your head, your face, down towards the ground. You don't need to see me, right? I'm here if you need to, but you don't need to. And keep the neck really soft. Use the top arm's hand, right? The top hand is down on the ground. And I start to push the floor away. I might reach that leg out a little bit, bringing the other hand in to support me when I need to. I keep my neck really soft. And when I'm all the way at the top, I re-engage. Come into seated or kneeling, whichever one is best in your body. See if you can't sit up nice and tall, and if maybe, maybe, right, we have found a little bit of space for you in the upper body at all. One more time here together, we observe what's going on for us in our bodies. Bring those palms together at the chest. As we push the palms lightly together, the shoulder heads gently glide back. We gently, notice my words here, we gently move the shoulder blades down and then the, 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 the bottom tips of the shoulder blades really gently lift the chest forward towards the thumbs. Inhale into those lungs. Exhale, bow the head. And take a moment of gratitude here for these beautiful bodies and a moment of gratitude that you came to this practice and that you're trying to give yourself some space and time. Namaste, friends. <clears throat> if you are still with me at this point in the video, that means you even went through Shavasana, even though there's probably a ton of things you thought about having to do. So congratulations, friends. That's called self-control, willpower, discipline, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, it's not easy to cultivate. So. You came to class and you stayed the whole class. Congratulations, friends. If you like this, tell other people about me. <laughs>